We're back for episode three. We survived, or I survived two episodes, <laughs> and you survived the first one. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you think? It was different. What do you for mean? For sure. Well, not having done anything like that before, so it was it was interesting. <laughs> Just. Well, I'm already getting excited because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, I felt that immediate rush that I did at the end of the last episode when it was so like, it was so cool that we talked for like 90 minutes straight. <laughs> you know, speaking of which, I need to make sure that I turn on our timer. Where's the timer? Well, I have my show notes on the iPad. I'm going to do my phone. Yeah, just just keep a running stop clock because um, okay. thank you so much if you guys have liked and subscribed and hit that notification bell i appreciate it and um episode two was wild you haven't had a chance to listen I to it i haven't watched it yet no. no because well you're still editing it well it's done it's just exporting and it was a beast of right. an episode i heard and it was good though i heard well, it was from good. me <laughs> i know <laughs> well from me I i'm mean, a little biased i'm a little good biased. content good conversation yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was really, really, the content was really well, what's, <laughs> conversed? I don't know what, <laughs> I always get caught up when I'm trying to make like an adjective, like describe something. Um, in the first episode, some people called me out on some silly things that I said, and sometimes I just need to just pause, wait, and then speak. Sometimes I'm just trying to think off the top of my head and. No, it doesn't work very well. But uh, yeah, so episode two was really cool. Neil was a great guest. That's what I'm getting at. He was a great guest. Had some amazing things. I didn't even think it was going to go that route. I mean, I had made show notes and things and and made some things that I wanted to, a list of some things that I wanted to talk to him about, but it turned out really, really good. But um, enough about Neil's episode. Thank you, Neil. Our first episode was a blast. I had a great time and I'm like so stoked that that I I roped you into being my co-host. <laughs> she had no clue. really yeah she had no clue. I dropped that on her at the forty fifth minute of the last episode or the first episode. I'm like, I want you to be my co-host, and she's like, what Okay, are you, what are you gonna pay me? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm not gonna pay you anything. Um, yeah, because yeah. I thought I was just going to be an occasional guest. Yeah, once a week. That's occasional <laughs> on occasion. Once no, a week. No, I figured once every <laughs> couple of months. Once a no way, man. People want to, Sharonica, people want to hear from you. They appreciate your opinion. You're a professional in what you do. What do you do, by the way? Did we didn't even talk about that the first episode, do we? Did no. We? Okay, so I learned this acronym S A H M. Saham. Stay at home mom. Oh. You're a stay at home yes. mom. And Okay, so we talked about the time that I've been here, uh, you know, just disrupting your space. And I got to say that that is a job, fellas. It is, it's not easy. It's a respectable vocation. It's the rarity in our culture nowadays. But stay-at-home moms rock the world. And, uh, yeah, so if you're a stay-at-home mom, know that you are loved and that you guys are just an amazing bedrock to our, to our society. You know, it's not done so often. It's a noble thing because everybody wants to have double incomes and stuff like that to make ends meet. I ain't going to lie. We've struggled. You know, we've struggled on a single income, but our family's awesome. Our kids are great. Um, Isaac's a smart whip. Gavin's as witty as they come and challenges us as parents. Great kid. Eden, super creative. Uh, Becton, I just cloned him so I can harvest his organs when mine start to fail. That's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a spitting image of me, poor kid. Well, he's a better image of me. I, he doesn't have the freckles, and he's got a, a clever sense of humor, and uh, I think he's loved by a lot of people. And then MJ, my second chance at fatherhood. And I say that because in a future episode, I want to talk about my mental issues and how we decided to have MJ. Mm-hmm. And that was a that was a really cool. We'll save that for the next episode. 
not next episode because I have some plans but for, for the next, a different one. For a different one because that mm. that's pretty that's pretty intense because, well, I'm teasing y'all so that y'all can stay on board with us. But, um, yeah, that was a real huge turning point in our lives. Mm. You know, um, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, but um, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback. Surprisingly, I mean, we're not in the millions of subscribers or even thousands, but. Amongst no, but we do have some very supportive friends, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, there you people would think that they're a little biased, obviously, because they're our friends. But the the constructive criticism mm-hmm. and the criticism that we've received so far, just after two episodes, has been has been great. And I want to thank all you guys for that. Um, I got a couple DMs, uh, on social media, that were you know just really inspirational. I was like, wow. Wow, I didn't think it. I didn't think it was going to be that impactful. Right. And you know, I shared some with you. What did mm-hmm. you? Th- what was your thought? Like, what was your thought? Well, I mean, it's it's cool just because. Well, this is our first time doing it. Mm-hmm. We've never done this sort of thing before. So, um, podcasts. <laughs> yes, podcasts. Um, so it's it's cool that people are liking it already. That okay, even with it being our first episode even with us not having experience that, hey, you guys are doing a good job and um, it's going well. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, I thought that was really neat. Just the response has been really great. So uh, today, just want to, well, I don't know. Let's see, what, what did I put in my show notes to talk about? Oh, yeah. Um, I had a couple people. Oh, that was just really, maybe I'll put it up on the screen. This one person uh, put on one of the comments and was, and and then they deleted it because I was going to show it. But fortunately, I grabbed a screenshot of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember? Yeah. I felt I didn't know how to feel about this because um, I don't know if they're a video game channel or they were trying to start Lion, uh, Lion's Den podcast. But, the, you know, it's like early bird got the worm. We got it already. We made some people upset. Already. Yeah. Well, they weren't upset. They weren't upset. They were just just heart disheartened. Right. Yeah. Disheartened because we grabbed the name before anybody else did. I'm really surprised. I looked it up too. I mean, in the time from from you know February when we started the idea, when I started the ideation of the Lions Den podcast, mm-hmm. looked it up, and I was like, okay, nobody has it. I'm, I was really surprised that you know because it makes sense, you know. Yeah. E- eventually, once this channel grows and things like that, I would like to have people on that I could challenge a little bit more. You know, mm-hmm. Neil challenged me on the last episode, but people that we can that I can just, uh, you know, question. Almost like a journalistic style mm-hmm. uh, podcast. Well, not journalistic because I don't want to grill them. But, I mean, I want to make sure that we get into the nitty-gritty of whatever it is that they specialize in. If it's local politics, if it's music, if it's uh, film. You know, try to get at the weeds because you can get you can talk to anybody about any subject and just get the surface candy-coated um, right. Uh, idea of what it is that they that they do but I want to get into the weeds and that's kind of the idea of lion's den you know you go into a lion's den and it's not necessarily an an ideal place to be but a place where you know I can pull I can pull insight out mm-hmm. of my guests ours is a little bit different a little bit lighthearted. yes yeah and um yeah so I'm really excited uh about that but this person you know put on the things like oh this really sucks we've been wanting to do blah 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 and we we have this wet this uh site or whatever and we were they were they said something like they were heartbroken was that what they said we're this was, uh, yeah. we're really heartbroken i was like oh man yeah i, I felt remember. bad but then i was like <laughs> <That's mean. laughs> yeah the little 12 year old in me was like yeah but um but also uh, Lion Tree Media. You know, people have asked about Lion Tree Media. Like, why are you calling it Lion Tree? Is that because of, you know, your last job? And actually, I ca- I came up with this name. Um, it used to be Lion Tree Films. Like in my head, uh, I had Alp Films uh, that, which is my initials, Alp Films, and then Lion Tree Films, and then now because I want to do beyond films, I want to do media, uh, YouTube, uh, uh, arts, graphic design, and things like that. It's Lion Tree Media to encompass a whole bunch of things. And um, uh, 
the idea comes from, I think I, it was, I, I want to say it was 2011. I was just surfing the internet and I saw a picture. I was just looking up lions, you know, because that's our last name in Spanish, Leon. Yep. So, um, so it's not just, it's not an arbitrary like, oh yeah, everybody picks a lion because it's the king of the jungle. No, that's actually my last name. So uh, pick the lion because it's pointed to me. And so I was looking up lions and I saw this pride of lions just chilling in a tree. And I was like, man, ain't nobody want to get close to that. Nobody would really want to get. I mean, <laughs> if you come up on a tree, you know, trying to get shade or, or you know, fruit off of the tree and you see a pride of lions chilling in there, ain't nobody going to get close to that. And so in my delusions of grandeur mind, I was like, imagine a, a media company that nobody can get close to, that nobody can touch. Yeah, I guess that that is kind of a little <laughs> conceited, right? <laughs> so, because um, I think you asked me too, right? Like, why Lion Tree? You know, did yeah, you, you had I, that idea, right? I think I did. No, yeah. knock. No, it's not. It's not a knock on 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 the last job that I had or anything like that. No, it's know? just not associated. Yeah, it's just not. It's as- not, or it's not because of that job. Right. Exactly. Um, so I used to work for a nonprofit, and it was it was called it's called not it was it is called uh, Tree of Life Church, and people thought that I had it was a spin off of that hmm. my last name and my workplace. No, it was actually it was actually an idea from a decade ago, 2011. So yeah, almost a decade ago that I, like I said, it was saw that on the on the internet, and I was like, yeah, that's cool. That would be really cool. So I always carried that moniker around in my head, Lion Tree, Lion Tree Films. And then Lion Tree Media now. So a bunch of, like I said, a bunch of people asked in some comments. And I was like, well, that's that's where it comes from. So Lion Tree Media, that's what, that's what it is. And uh, a couple of people like the logo. Um, I do logo design. So, you know, contact me below or go to my website, contact me. If you guys need logo design or whatever. Uh, everything that you see graphically on our page, the thumbnails, um, all the socials that we have, all of that, any graphic design, 95% of it I've created. I've created um, from copying other people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I've created and um, yeah. So if you guys need some graphic design work, hit me up. Hit me up and we'll get you guys hooked up. Um, yeah, good prices. <laughs> But um yeah, so did you did you have any opinion on the logo or anything like that? Just other than what you said? No, not other than what I said. Mm-mm. Um I thought it was really cool. I'm just gonna go back to the last episode because like I said at the beginning of this one, I thought it was so so awesome that we talked it was therapeutic, it was cathartic. I've said it since then. It was just so cool to be able to just sit here and talk to you. Somebody else mentioned uh, in a DM that they were so, it was just really beautiful that you were actively listening and supporting me. And I didn't think of that at all. So it was a really neat perspective. I was like, yeah, you know what she is. So that's kudos to you, man. <laughs> so do you, is, so this is way out of your comfort zone, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. Um, keep talking then. <laughs> um, yeah, because I'm very used to keeping my opinions and my thoughts to myself, I guess. This is a good um, segue. But keep talking, but because I'm going to talk about your passive aggressiveness next. <laughs> um, She's great at it. Because the way I was raised, we you keep your opinion to yourself. Like, yeah, women are not heard. Well, they're only seen. Is that is it? No, that, is it no. That old? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. Like I Victorian think Victorian age. Manners? No, I think Women just for us, like just heard. the kids, it was like, no, we don't, we don't care. The kids, like, really? They were just like, okay, it should shut up, kids. Uh, well, not shut up, but um, your well, opinion doesn't matter speak. in this kind wow. of thing. Um, and so I've learned uh, to try to hear my my because I think I was raised the same way. I've learned to try to hear out my kids' opinions. So lately, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So that makes it hard for me to voice those sometimes so I still have to work so on the whole communication thing because so it's a habit and voicing things 
Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you say it's a good habit? So, sometimes, oh. yes. <laughs> I would. Yeah. yeah. I would because, you know, then you temper your words or you think about what you're going to say before you say it or, okay, maybe this isn't the time to actually voice anything anyways. So Do you think, I think if it's it, good advice, can you say, because I hear this among leadership circles or whatever, um, that the right thing at the wrong time is still the wrong thing. Uh, there was a post that a, fr- a good friend of ours from, from Colleen posted talking about that very specific matter. Like, I think the wrong I can... thing at the, or the right thing at the wrong time is still this. I can understand that to a certain degree, but don't you think if it's the right thing? Go ahead. Well, I can agree with that to the extent that sometimes they're not in the space to hear it. Even if it's the right thing to say at the time, or if it's the right thing to say, maybe it's not the time to say it because they're not in a place where they're going to receive it. Okay. Now, wouldn't a person in their, in their, in a good heart, in a good, you know, in a, in a respectful place, Mm. wanting to help be able to seek out the wisdom within themselves or with, you know, praying or God or, or whatever, or their experience would be able to say, would be able to figure out how to say the right thing at the right time. So let's say you're not in a place to receive it. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and I have some wisdom that I know that can help you. You're not hearing it, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the that's the that's the secular mindset. That's the carnal mindset, as we would say, right? You're not ready, I, you know. It's, mm. No, I just want somebody that I can vent to. Okay, but wouldn't the right thing then be, hey, listen, I'm your friend, love you. I know you're not in you 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 feel like you're not in the right place to in the right place to listen to this, but if you would just calm yourself for a second just ease your mind listen to listen to my heart in this one of my supervisors was really really great at saying that all the time he's like i hope you hear my heart in this and now that that rings true in this type of scenario like if i say i hope you hear my heart in this know that i still love you i'm not trying to pass judgment but i feel that you need to hear this do you think that that would be a um i think it i think the approach matters Oh, yeah. Approach definitely. Because so, what if you delay telling that person what you feel they need to hear and they go and do something stupid contrary to the advice that you would have given them because they weren't in a place to receive it? Well, I mean, I can see that. And thanks to our sponsor, therapy.com. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's just, I'm just proposing the... Yeah. The perspective, right? Yeah, and I... I Is that just something you need, need to think about, you think? I think I would have to think about that because I think still sometimes... Just need to shut you, up. <laughs> you, you just can't, like, approach a certain subject with a person sometimes. Like, you have to wait until you feel like, you know what, they're ready to hear it. Or, mm-hmm. okay you know, their heart is soft enough to hear it or or they're in a headspace to hear it. I think the active, what's the word I'm looking for? The person that's wanting to help has to be smart. That's the thing I think is, is not have just having the wisdom, but being smart enough to know how to deliver the wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it, but but my opinion is generally speaking, is that it's always the right time to do the right thing. I think Martin Luther King uh, ascribed to that. But he also had wisdom beyond beyond cultures. You know, he was a wise, wise person. So, uh, you know, I'm not comparing myself to that. I, would, I, don't, I don't even, not even close to that type of uh, level of leadership or wisdom. But, yeah. Uh, so, speaking on passive aggressiveness... And you're, <laughs> um, that's hard for me. Like being passive aggressive. No, I'm just, I, I'm not being, I, I'm not <laughs> passive aggressive. I actually, I don't necessarily despise it, but it, it kind of does frankly irk me sometimes. It's like, so we're going to open up a little bit of a, be a little bit raw if you don't mind. Um, where do you think that comes from? 
Because it was, okay, let me give the example, right? <laughs> yeah. Can I tell on you for a second? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Please don't tell on me because I know you've got like <laughs> a, an iPad that's full of information on me. But no, the situation was we were trying to get somewhere, right? We were at the mall. Uh-huh. And uh, Isaac had to be home to get ready for work at a certain time. Yeah. And so I had already, I'll just tell on myself, I had already said, hey, uh, we need to go uh -huh. so we can get him home on time. Right. And then they're like, oh, well, let's go into this store. And and I'm like, Yeah, that was okay. bad. That, I'll admit that was bad on our part. We weren't thinking. We were just enjoying the moment. And so then I said, okay, how long will it take you to get, like, how quick can you get ready for work? No, but that's not, that's not how it was said. That's not how it was said. Because when you say it like that, it, it makes it sound like you said that immediately after we wanted to go into the store. No, we were in the store. No, we, okay, so what happened was, so what happened was we <laughs> went into the store because we just flippantly went into the store. We just went into the store because we were at the mall. We're just going into the next store, window shopping, right? We went into the next store and we're walking around and, you know, in retrospect, I can see Sharonica just fuming like behind me and uh not fuming but a little irritated because yes. i always am very, very conscious punctual of, yeah and he and this is different because it's work it's not like you're going to a function so i appreciate that yeah yeah but you could hear the 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 metaphorical or figurative <laughs> stomping in her head just like i told these guys that we needed to go and that's what i meant when i said and then so she just passively aggressively says isaac how long does it or would you say <laughs> how <laughs> how long will it take you to get ready yeah but she didn't say it like that like in all her disney voice she said she said it like how long will it take you to get ready like almost like <laughs> like you know that because we're running late, you're going to have to get ready super fast because I told you guys I didn't want to go into the store and now you're throwing my schedule off. <laughs> no, because I didn't say I didn't want to go in the store. But No, when, you didn't say but that. When but when Becton asked to go in the store, I was like, yeah, you've got about two seconds to go in that store. Yeah, that was another passive aggressive <laughs> move right there. It's like, yeah, you can go in there for three seconds. <laughs> That's it. Okay, one, two, three, get out, you know. <laughs> Which is funny because actually when we walked in there, MJ was like, uh, this is longer than three seconds. <laughs> That's our youngest four-year-old, the smartest whip in the whole household. She's got a vocabulary that'll kill you. But she said, what? She, she, we, when like, she walked in, she's yeah, listening she's like, to mom. This is longer than two seconds. She's like, one, two. She starts <laughs> counting. She's the literal one. in. Yeah. I hope she doesn't take that back. No, well, that's not passive aggressive. That's very frank. Mm -hmm. That's a matter of fact. Like, Beck, mom said two seconds. Come on, let's go. <laughs> that's her. Yeah, she's but, a character um, for sure. Yeah. And those of y'all that know her know that she is. She's just, uh, I remember one of the one of the workers at the church just was was flabbergasted at the level of her conversation. So she was in the three-year-old room or something like that. Was it twos or threes? Maybe a three-year-old. Yeah, um, and think, she can. Yeah. She goes, I can't believe it. Like, all these other kids are googling and gagaing and playing with toys, and she's over there. So, did you know that I was watching? You know, and she's mm -hmm. she, she has she's having full conversations with adults at the age of two or three. I think that's because we never talk baby talk to her, that's which true. we never talk baby talk to any, any of, our of our kids. kids. Um, that's a then, that's a good that's a good parent tip. Parent tip. Parent tip. <laughs> I'm gonna flash it on the screen. Parent tip. Parent tip. No baby talk. Yeah. No baby talk. We never, which is funny because then I see other people's little kids. Oh, you're so cute. And I talk baby talk. But you don't baby. You, do you baby talk? Like that. And like, like yeah, a little voice, but that's not baby talk. Baby well, talk is no. like what Pastor Joshua well, does. Me, I'm busting you out, <laughs> oh. PJ. <laughs> like, oh, I'm yeah, like, mine's no, not dude, that bad. Stop. Stop. Mine's not that, that bad. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then having four older siblings too, mm -hmm. I think, is what mm -hmm. helped her get such a huge vocabulary. Yeah. Um. So, where do you think that comes from? Like that is that is that maybe um, a way that you were raised? Because we were raised, I was raised, frankly, like, um, boom, 
this is what I meant and you better do it, you know, or this is what I said, even to the point of, you know, my, I'll tell him myself, my disrespect was meant to be disrespectful. Like I didn't, I didn't hold back. And I even told you like when we had our first, when we had problems when we were first married or in the first seven or eight years of our marriage, we're like, if I meant, if I meant to say, if I, if you're hurt by what I said, it's because I meant to hurt you. And that was, oh, that was such a jerk move, but it, it was who I was. And then Jesus got a hold of me. No, <laughs> Jesus got a hold of me a long time ago and it didn't, um, didn't do no good. But yeah, I was raised in a very frank household and, uh, uh we were crass. We were sarcastic. We loved each other. You know, to the best of our... We were uh, definitely not crass or sarcastic. In your house. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We It was just, it. I guess, a different dynamic. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm sure that we joked with each other and stuff, but it was... Yeah. I don't know. Never probably on the level like what you guys... Yeah. Did growing up. As soon as parents left, we were cussing up a storm. I mean, we were, I think, I don't know. Yeah, we never would have done that. Yeah, we were, we were, we were little heathens, heathens in sheep's clothing. And I keep, I have my notes over here and and it's just not comfortable. I'm going to have to move my notes over this way. Because I feel awkward like I'm, like I'm separating myself from you uh, in trying to read my notes. So actually, you know what? I have them on my. I have them on my laptop. I should just that's what the laptop's for and I'm not using it. Um where is it? So we were talking about yeah, so you you don't passive aggressiveness. I'm not sure where that comes from. Hmm. It's interesting. There they are. There there's my notes. Sorry guys. Um Yeah, that's that that would be an an interesting this like one thing that I like getting out of this, especially after Friday, was being introspective. Mm. Like I've thought a lot about our relationship over the last nineteen years since 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 uh, we recorded this last uh, Thursday. Was it? It was Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought a lot about you know the missed opportunities, and you know just because we didn't have that conversation, you know, and it goes back to the first episode when we when I was talking about the art of conversation and the power of talking. You know, like right now we're recording ourselves and we know we're not going to be jerks to each other because we have, we have not, it's not, not necessarily a facade, but we want to present ourselves intelligibly so that we can help people by sharing our problems, you know? Mm. And, um, so on that, you know, I, I appreciate the support again that, that you've shown other people have noticed it and it's, it's just awesome, babe. So it's really, really cool. I'm going to try not to get sappy on this episode. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, I, I count this as a milestone. You know, 19 years in, it's a huge milestone. Like, I never thought that I would have something like this. You know, we're not rich. We're not, we're not even in the middle class yet. And, but to be able to have this opportunity to be creative, um, is awesome. But you're also creative. And a lot of our audience, uh, uh, the majority of our current audience knows, but a lot of the audience that will probably catch this, you know, a year from now or whatever, they don't know what you do. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, I am on the worship team at our church. Uh-huh. So. Don't, don't, don't shy away from it. <laughs> Just say it. Just like, I'm on the, I, no, that, that's kind of <laughs> <No>. bad too. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I help lead worship at our church. Yeah, and if you ever um, want to listen to any of her singing, go to treeoflifechurch.org slash live. And there's a there's a thing that you can view past events and see some of the singing. And usually the singing is at the beginning of part of each of those uh, videos. So uh, shout out to Tree of Life Church. And I mean, they have, not just you, but just the worship environment is really cool. Uh, really, really powerful part of the service. Uh, not to take away from any other part of the service, but I mean, just the worship is high end, professional, as professional as it can be. 
and uh, just some amazing, amazing singers. Two of your sisters, your adopted sisters are on there. One of my blood brothers is on there. It's just some really, really great music. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the intro and outro of uh, episode one, two, and three, and hopefully a couple more in the future, is was created by one of the one of our keyboardists. One of the keyboardists at the church, Orlando Hargrove, and uh, shout out to Orlando. And uh, we'll probably have some uh, some links, not in this episode, but once we we talk through some some things that that Orlando and I can can work out you know he's an amazing amazing musician amazing programmer so you'll want to make sure that you that you get in touch with uh, with him he's got really great great music and uh, musicality and skills so you'll want to stay in touch with him but yeah so again all about that worship there at tree it's amazing amazing and the professional quality of what they have to offer is just just second to none really uh, put a lot of work into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The audio engineer video. is amazing. The new production director, he's really taken the quality of the video to another level. It's uh is really really good. Just just all together just really really good stuff. Um the production value and I'm big on production value, which is why we have what we have. You know, people are asking like what do, where did you get these things? Where did you get that? And or why did you decide to go this way? And and it's because of production value. I think that's the one thing that separates an amateurish pod, podcast uh, from, you know, a professional level po- podcast. I'm a professional and I don't want to do, I didn't want to do this amateur. That's why it took six mm. months to get it going, you know, because I had the microphones right there. There's one right behind you. And I had uh, different soundboards and things like that and audio mixing boards and and speakers and and I could have just put a microphone in front of my face and just started talking or we could have just started sharing and that would have been good I think people would have been receptive to it but it would have just lumped us in with all those other self-starting DIY things so with the level of expertise that I bring to the table I was a little bit um uh I don't want to say OCD but just like just nitpicky about the uh, about the quality that I want to produce. There you go. Thank you. See, it's those adjectives again. I can't hit those adjectives. There you go. You. I'm just going to have you for every guest. I'm going to have you sit right here, right next to me. <laughs> and then I'm when I get stuck, you're going to just sneak over and say, serendipitous. <laughs> Should I have a dictionary open? Yeah, just a thesaurus. <laughs> just like, you mean duplicitous, you know? <laughs> no, gregarian. Why am I, why, why, why am I these three letter or the three syllable... Uh, <laughs> Uh, adjectives, yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you for all those. <laughs> just sit right over there and just off Facetious. camera, just yeah, off camera, just <laughs> yell adjectives at me, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're excited about the the milestone and the production value that that we're kind of trying to bring to the table. That we're trying to bring to the table, and that's why I kind of threw that on you last time because I knew people would have a, a positive reaction to you being on, and. I think I think I got more things said about you than anything else and that was that was really cool. I really wanted that for for you because you deserve it and you know just want to boost your confidence a little bit, you know, if you'll let me. I know what I'm I I'm not narcissistic but I know that what I'm doing is 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 okay and it's good and it has a good level of production value, but I want you to know that you're just as good if not better than me. <laughs> um, except for when you give me that stink eye <laughs> that whole passive aggressive stink eye I don't know sometimes I'm just like what would you give me I that? don't give you a stink eye no you said stink eye yeah no stink eye was given in that's that instance true. that's true in that instance was there was no stink eye but um, there was a stink eye given and it was uh we were going to a party. Remember how we talked about that? I said, write stink eye in my notes. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. There was no stink eye given. In that incident? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to give. It's like one of those implied <laughs> stink eyes. You don't have to give the stink eye. to. No, that, that's a little bit obvious. But there's a twitch in your eyebrow <laughs> that when you want to give a stink eye and you don't. <laughs> Like it's 
it's like it's there and you're like i'm holding back the stink eye i'm not gonna give the stink eye it's like one of those things is like okay calm down take a deep breath take a hit of my pen and no well i don't do that you you is this like it's the implied stink eye uh so yeah we were um I almost got into one of my depressive funks on Saturday, Saturday mm-hmm. last. And I was like, um, because I was just tired. I was having problems with the, the, I had had problems all that Friday and I'm still having a little bit of issues with the editing part because of the way that the software is not communicating with my SD cards. And I was just oh, frustrated and I stayed up so late and I was just tired and I was just like, doggone it, man. I'm, I'm on the brink of, launching this thing and it's just this is just another little problem and i don't want to deal with it and i don't want to deal with people and it well i didn't say that in in that order it was more like that created a small enough snowball pebble to start the hill and to start going down the hill and turn it into the point where i just didn't i would just wanted to become antisocial and um but but then, you know, I sat in here and I was just watching the computer just try to force out an edit. And I could feel the stink eye in the back of my head. Like, you didn't give it to me, but I could feel it. Or maybe it was, I don't know. I think that was subconscious. Yeah, that's what I'm because saying. It was a subconscious no, stink eye. There was, <laughs> no, because I just, well, I came home from work and started getting us ready to go. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, you're right. It was a little bit of, Guilt on my part. Dude, I'm my voice just crying. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just went through third puberty, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I started dwelling on those things because you just got, you had just gotten back from work. And guys, she works Saturday mornings and she leaves here at 4 four thirty, four forty five. Yeah, about 4.45. And you work till what, 2.30? 2.30. And she was, yeah. she was, she Three, was the quintessential Sam, Sam, stay at home mom. <laughs> she was the queen. She's like, well, I already committed myself and we're going to go. You know, and I was like, okay, babe, but you know, I'm just going to chill at the house and, you know, just make sure that this edit gets out. And you're like, okay, do whatever you want. Passive aggressive. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, guys, if she ever says do whatever you want, don't do whatever you want. <laughs> that is not good. Um, I think most, most guys know that by now. But, um, you know, it turned out to be a huge win in my favor. It was, it was great hanging out with friends. And, um, you know, uh, one thing that I always say is that I've kind of been in this proverbial pit with serving in ministry, not in a bad way, but just like, you know, I don't get to get out of the church walls to meet with people, you know. And when I do, it's usually awkward because I'm always still, con- I was always still concentrating on ministry and making sure that my mind was on ministry and everything like that. Um, but this is one of the first events that I've gone to where I didn't have to think about anything in ministry. Like, I have to rush home and do, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, uh, man, I had a great time just talking to people. As a matter of fact, like... See, and that would have been roles reversed that night because I knew I had to be up the next morning. However, uh-huh. you did take care of the ironing for me. Yes. So I did not have to worry about that. Where's that scorecard? <laughs> All right. Sharonica 7, Abby 1. Yeah. <laughs> I did do that. Um, and so that's, that's called making a deposit, guys. It's called, And once we get to within two or three, then things start to, with two or three <laughs> points of the score, then we start to uh, cash in on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, what, was, what was crazy, and, and I don't know if, if it was my energy that brought it to, to the party or if it was just, you know, you could just chalk it up to divine orchestration again. Everybody was talking about podcasts. Everybody that I was around, I never, I didn't bring it up once. <laughs> I didn't bring it up once. But this gentleman showed up. Um, he's part of this uh, vet network, vet podcast network. And I mean, he says it's thousands of veteran owned podcasts. I'm like, hello. Like I started, he started telling me about it. I'm like, I didn't even mention it to him. And, and, and then one of my friends and the, the one who, uh, we're there for it. He says, hey, Abby, t- talk to this guy. He's all about podcasts. And then he says, hey, Abby just started his podcast. And you're like, oh, really? Yeah. And then we got to talk and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. And we talked probably for about 25, 30 minutes about nothing but podcasts and his experience. I think he's got on a 
he's he's on his 100th episode or something like that. I'm like, hot dog, man. And then you found more people that were talking about yeah, the podcast so, when you walked to a different area, right? Yeah. So, but, you know, we, I, we joked a lot. I joked a lot about sponsorships and things like that. And I was talking to another gentleman about the podcast. And, you know, we were talking about, like, well, how do you make money on that? And I'm like, well, you know, through merchandising. And then he he had a... He's a marketing kind of guy, and well, not he's not a marketing guy, but he had a whole bunch of marketing ideas for me. I'm like, hot dog. So again, you know, subconsciously or or divine orchestration, or however that works out, whatever you believe, um, we believe in the divine orchestration. But he, it, it just it just all gelled. Started, I had people talking to me, ideas about. I actually wrote a couple of them down on my on my uh, cell phone, and. Um, yeah, it, it ended up working. Oh yeah, and then towards the end, when that kind of side of the of the pool had settled down, I went and sat down close to the kids. I sat down, and as I sat down, these guys were talking about podcasts. I was like, "All right, this this couldn't have been a more perfect time." I didn't again. I didn't plug myself to them or nothing like that. I didn't. I wasn't that guy that goes around and say, "Hey, listen to my podcast." <laughs> yeah, guess what? We just started. We're on episode two. You know. <laughs> No, it wasn't like that. So it was it was actually really, really, really cool because it kind of confirmed to me that we're on the right path. I'm like complete strangers, generally speaking, talking about podcasts. I'm like, this is this is this is the deal. This is the real deal. So um I was really glad that I ended up going. Yeah. Yeah. And then you didn't get to drive. You didn't have to drive. Exactly, which was great. Yeah. That was, was that your hang up? I was a little, well, I was tired too because yeah, uh, I get up at four. So, um, but I also drive 30 minutes one way to work and 30 well, minutes back. Time. And uh, mm. we're at 40 minutes. Okay. We're going to try um, to, we, we're, I'm going to try to keep ours to an hour. Okay. To, to help offset, you know, some of the bigger guests because right. like Neil's is, Neil's was two hours, but it was two hours of just amazing content. But we're yeah. going to try to keep ours a little bit lighthearted. And uh, and short, shorter, really. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. You were saying? Um, yeah, so just the drive, like, to and from work that day. I think I'd done a lot of driving Friday, too, because... Yeah, because you had that event. I dropped off a couple kids at work, picked... Well, I dropped one that... kid off at work, then had to go back because he forgot his name tag, then had to go back to pick up the other kid from work yeah. and then take them to an event. And then home. In so the I've evening. done a little bit of driving yeah. there. So I was like, oh, I don't want to. Uh, Isaac's almost eighteen, and uh, and I didn't get my license till I was eighteen. You got yours when you were fifteen and a half. No, your no. permit. Uh, permit when I was sixteen. And my license at eighteen. Mm -hmm. I think. So we're he turns eighteen here in a couple of months. So we're looking forward to that, and we're trying to set ourselves up to be able to get him a car. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there was a lot of driving. So yeah. It, it ended up working out and yeah. doing the, the ironing. I love ironing. If there's a satisfaction, it's one of those uh, satisfying things. You ever watch those satisfying videos? I find that, it annoying when I can't get a oh, I love wrinkle it. out. I can always <laughs> get a, I can always get a wrinkle out. And uh, yeah, I think that's in the military. I love that. We that was that was what we had to do. We had to press and starch and everything like that. So yeah, ironing is second nature to me. Um, but yeah, that's what. That's kind of what a true relationship is all about is is finding that balance. And one thing that I think that we we should do is well, we're going to try to be as open and as raw as possible, but I think that's really going to help us to help people out there because I think that the state of marriage is you know, we're not going to go evangelical on people and 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 talk about the decline of the family and stuff like that cuz everybody knows about that stuff. Everybody it's obvious. But let's talk about the state of marriages. You know, I think a lot of people struggle with with marriages because, you know, one person is trying to be God to the other person by telling them what they need to do or or the other person is, uh, you know, just being completely apathetic because or they come across as apathetic because they think that they're doing enough. And um, w when you think about like the state of marriages, what do you think about? Like how how do you mean? Just in general, like, like this is a this might be a little bit too this might be a little bit personal, but I you know we left an area at one point, and it felt like after we left, a whole bunch of people 
we're getting after we left that area, it's you know was it 10 years ago or whatever 15 years ago I felt like a lot of people were were struggling and getting divorces and it was one of those like wow did we just get out in time would we if we had not left you know and that was that was hard you know we don't know i don't know what was happening at the right. time so i'm not passing judgment on that it was just like wow you know i never thought that that would have happened you know and and sometimes those cycles repeat themselves and and especially it hurts when it happens to your friends mm -hmm. you know but so that generally speaking what like the state of marriages in the united states what do you think about if i say if i said what, what do you think about marriages you know not getting married but just marriages in general you know um i think sometimes people don't realize that marriages work it's not just hey i fell in love with you let's mm -hmm. get married you know there's work involved mm -hmm. um you know, and you're not always going to get along. You're not always going to agree on everything. Compromise has to be made. Um, and we are by no means experts on this stuff. And we're experts I mean, on we, compromise. I we, <laughs> you know, we have stuff that we have to work on, obviously. But, but I think sometimes people just forget that, hey, like it's work. You got to put in the work. You can't just throw in the towel it's not all Sunday when it's, fun day. yeah <laughs> you can't just throw in the towel when it's not going your way i mean obviously there are some marriages where there are extenuating circumstances and yeah you know and that's and we have to emphasize but. that we're not passing judgment on on any of that because uh we we know you know you listening out there know that know of some couple that's going through something and you've tried everything you can and it is what it is um you know, there is a statistic out there that's floating around and, and it's unequivocally false that says that marriage uh, in the church is, you know, that divorce in the church is just the same as it is in the secular arena. And I, I've, um, I'm going to owe you the, the, the research on that, but essentially, generally speaking, whoever claims that they're Christian, well, that's the general populace. 90% 90, mm. 90 of people in America claim that they're Christian. That doesn't mean that they're Christians. Yeah. And so people that regularly attend some sort of, you know, religious event, reg and by regular, I mean like twice, three times a month. Mm. Um, uh, people that are part of, you know, life-giving groups uh, that... that where guys hold themselves accountable to other guys as far as, you know, just different things. You know, when you're, when you're together with other healthy couples, your marriage is going to be healthy. And I think we get so caught up in life with our business or with our, with our work. And we with think kids with even. kids, even like the wife with the kid or the, like the stay at home moms with the kids mm. that becomes their life. And the husband with the, with work and that becomes their life. But the husband thinks, you know, I'm doing my part because I'm providing for the family. And the wife says, well, I'm doing my part because I'm taking care of the kids when, you know, they should be kind of taking care of each other because mm -hmm. money comes and goes and the kids will eventually grow up just like you did and went off and, yeah. and became a pair with your. With and your I think husband. we've started telling our kids even, okay, hey, mommy and daddy are going out. Yeah, you know, because, because we come first. the other kids are you big enough to watch the little one, right? And you're going out again? Well, yes, because mommy and daddy come first. Well, to each other. Yeah. Yeah, eventually our kids are going to grow up and they're going to go, but they're going to see that too. They see that. Mm -hmm. They see that they're, they need to put whoever they choose as a spouse or as a partner later on, that they need to put that person first. A lot of people, you know, well, these are my babies. Yes, this is true, but you have to work on that other part of, of the mm -hmm. covenant that you made. You made a commitment with this other human being to create these little beings. And it's important that you, um, that you, uh, that you honor that and that you work at that. Just like anything, just like this podcast, like I put in so much work for it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to honor the word that I've already put out on social media and do my very best to put these podcasts out. Like I have now, if I ever lack or, or lacks back on it, then I'll uh, I'll do what I can to catch up, but that again, that's part of the work part. Mm -hmm. I'm working to get, and that's just and that's just a podcast. 
Right. If I'm willing to put in that much work into a podcast, why am I not putting that much work into our marriage? And so, yeah, you mm-hmm. and I, we try to... We so our next our sp- date is when? <laughs> we just had a date. <laughs> didn't we? When was our... Uh, for my birthday. No, didn't we go again to see Aladdin? Speaking of which... No, because we took the kids. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hot dog, everybody. She got me. <laughs> you got me. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let, well, let's go out. Bye, guys. Okay. Podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to go out. Wait, is do we have to pick up a kid at work? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, they're all home. Nope, they're uh, home. Yeah, okay. Uh, I forgot because uh, both of our kids, one of our kids just started well, the job. both of the older ones. Both of yes. the older ones, yeah. They both work at this local movie theater. And so we get free tickets. We get free tickets. Nice. It's really nice. Uh, we could actually, our whole family can go in for free because <laughs> yeah. both of them, <laughs> Since both each of one of them, them it's now. part of the perks of the job. They each get mm, four tickets or something like that. So Yeah, it's good perks. Good perks. Um, um, but yeah, the local theater here is fantastic. Um, but yeah, we do need to, hey, you got me. Got to gotta set up a date. Well, we, we might be going somewhere this weekend. Maybe, the, yeah. Yeah, hopefully that works out. Because actually I was thinking about Heading heading down south and going to the beach with the kids before the summer's out and stuff, before things start to get busy, before this next job starts to kick up and I have tons of training to do and things like that. Yeah. And they've never, well, think, MJ has never been to a beach ever. Okay. And the other kids, the San only Diego. beach they've been to is California. California, yes. when you burn my back. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you the story. Okay, uh, so. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I'm big. Look, I put the sunblock on. No, she didn't. She did not put the sunblock on. Okay, so I put a certain amount of sunblock on my hands, and I do this number, you know, and I put it all over my, and I can't reach, right? You know, your arms don't reach that far back. There's a clever meme that I saw a dude put put a uh, lotion on a on a roller and an extension, and he just <laughs> he started rolling. The sunblock on his back <laughs> with the paint roller. Oh, ingenuity. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. Um, so I put the, I didn't have a paint roller on me. So, and I asked Veronica, I said, hey, babe, can you go ahead and put it on my back? And sure enough, I have this shape of all the area that I can't reach <laughs> exactly where Sharonica had put sunblock on me. I think she put like two microns thick of sunblock on my back, but I was beat red. Like everywhere I couldn't reach, that's that's where it, that's where it burnt. <laughs> and uh, it was really funny. That's uh, because you're supposed to reapply every couple of hours, and your front wouldn't have burnt because you were over. But my building arms, my arms didn't burn, my <laughs> neck know. didn't burn, my face didn't burn. Just wherever you put the lotion, I still have the scars. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> we need to go to therapy just for that. Just for lotion. We need to go to lotion therapy. Well, no, let's not say that. Lotion therapy doesn't sound like a good place we want to go to. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, you know, back to the state of marriages. It, it is work. It's work. We have fun. Those, I couldn't, I mean, any other person would be, mad. Ah, well, not any other person. It was just funny. It was, it sucked. My back hurt for several days, but it was funny. And now, you know. We got a story to tell on the podcast. Um, but one thing I did want to touch on and save this for possibly the next episode and and be a be a, like a self-help thing is talk about one of the things um, that we learned a long time ago about honor and respect. What was the name? Is that uh, what was the name of that book that uh, um, love, and, love respect? and respect, love and respect. That's yes. right. not honor and respect, love and respect. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know. Can you tell me a little bit? Do you do you remember? And the other one, I think, was his needs, her needs. His needs, her needs. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and those are some really good resources that you'll. Well, I'll see. Remind me here. I need to put those. Uh, uh, what's it called? The book is called Love and Respect. Mm-hmm. And respect. And the other one is called. His needs. His needs. Her, her needs. needs. And if you're, his, needs needs and will remind me to put that in the show in the description okay. i'll put links to, to to those books okay in the description so that if you want to um just enrich your relationships 
uh, those are really, really good books. They they kind of help us out. I mean, just the basic premise that a woman has different love languages and the love that she requires and the love that she she that fulfills her relationship and then the respect that the man requires and the honor that he looks for from his spouse. Those are really... We should probably go back and read them again. Just yeah, just to read them. Well, well let's do mm-hmm. that. Let's make that our homework so okay. that we can talk on that subject. Okay. Yeah, because I think a lot of a lot of marriages would value. So we've I mean, we've kind of, we've read those books and I think they're just subconsciously in, in entrenched in our minds so then we kind of they kind of we just kind of go to them. I would think. Cuz you know, sometimes there's an adage that says that um I don't have to know what I ate for breakfast last week in order to for me to know that it nourished my body. Like, it's like, well, how can you, you know, if you can't remember two Sundays sermon ago, I'm like, well, I don't have to know what it was in order to know that I know that it helped me out. Mm-hmm. It's like breakfast. What did you eat for breakfast seven days ago? Right now, right off the top of your head. Cereal, probably. <laughs> probably. But you don't know. You don't have to know exactly what it was, but you know that it nourished you for that day. That's all you need to know. Mm-hmm is that it helped you out and somehow your body ingested it and it helped you out and whatever. That's just kind of like, you know, reading books. I don't have to necessarily quote them verbatim, but just know that they nourished my relationships and that's important. So we'll, yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, look over those books and pick out a chapter or something like that. And we'll use that to discuss. Cause I wanted to talk about that as okay. a part two. I wanted to start talking about it right now about love and respect and, um, you know, setting healthy boundaries. You know, we're we're both adults. You know, what happens between me and you is nobody's business unless we want to unless we want it to be other people's business. Mm. Uh, especially if it can help other people. How do you how do you feel about about having those kinds of conversations? While I drink well. out of my, <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's it. <laughs> okay, podcast over. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm sure some of it may be difficult and m- maybe uncomfortable, but um, but I think we can get through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's let's make that our homework for the next podcast. Okay. And so look forward to it. The next one is going to be about marriages and love and respect. And how we can find healthy compromise to move our relationships forward for the better. There's a lot of things. Uh, um, I feel I would just about. <laughs> you know how when you're <laughs> avoiding that sex talk, eventually we'll probably get to even that. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh come on! Like I said, we're adults, and and 95 of the people that are listening to this are adults, and 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 that's something that's hardly ever talked about. So we'll we'll figure out a way to talk about it healthily. You know, won't get vulgar. Um, that's for other websites to <laughs> <laughs> to handle. That's not our business. Mm. Um, but yeah. Oh man, we also we didn't talk about the reviews that we wanted to talk about. I yeah. guess that's gonna be and that's gonna be episode seven because <laughs> ever so ours will be the odds and then the evens will be the guess. Hopefully, that's my yeah. So so this is three. The next one that we'll be on is five. And maybe for seven. Let's make so let me write that down. Episode seven. Episode number seven will be the review. Um and we'll just we'll just lay it out there. Um we're gonna talk about the movie that we went on a date for, which was Aladdin. Aladdin. I loved it. It was so good. <laughs> and consider this blasphemy if you will, but I thought Will Smith was fantastic was and dare i say a better genie yes i said it oh, Ooh, them yeah. fighting words yeah it's very <laughs> fighting words i have some opinions about that i'm actually gonna write it down right now so uh comment below what you no not yet not yet not till episode seven so will smith as a genie better genie um yeah that is that is fighting words right there because <laughs> uh, yeah i love robin williams too i mean Name me five Robin Williams movies. Uh oh my goodness. Uh Jumanji. Uh 
See, that's what I'm talking about. Hook. That's what I'm talking about. People um, revere Robin Williams like he was some, this comedic god, which okay, he was. Keep in mind. Which he was, but that, people can't even name mm-mm. five of his movies right off the top of their head. Patch Adams, Goodwill Hunting, Jumanji. Um, never saw Goodwill Hunting and never saw Patch Adams. I guarantee it's because my parents didn't let me watch it. Uh, now, remember how I was raised. This is true. I mean, I, I watched him on Mork and Mindy. Yeah, never, I, I, watched I didn't have TV either. Yeah, I watched him on Morecambe. Not who I knew, you know, that's that was. <laughs> I think I heard that at some point. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. And, and by the way, this is Live Long and Prosper. This is Nanu Nanu. <laughs> There's a difference, folks. There's a huge difference. Um, yeah, Robin Williams. I mean, I've I've known of Robin Williams for for decades since the 70s since he was on the mork and mindy show so i have a lot of respect for him. my point is that i really loved will smith in aladdin fantastic so we'll talk about that in episode seven uh episode five look forward to love and respect and we'll make that a recurring theme because i think a lot of people can take can yeah so we'll need to get in a couple fights before then <laughs> and- <laughs> can we not <laughs> maybe <laughs> get in a- well, let's go i know what we could do we go to the mall again and get there with some time and just watch couples. Let's just do that. That would be interesting. Yeah, we'll just do that and just say, I bet you they're not having sex. You know? Oh, <laughs> I Lord. bet you, I bet you <laughs> she dressed him, you know? <laughs> Something oh, like that. No. Yeah, shut up, everybody. You know you do it. You know you do it. I like to people watch, but that's what I'm saying. Not necessarily. <laughs> people do watch. Do I ever do that? You subconsciously critique everybody. It's like, yeah. She doesn't like him or <laughs> well, I or like to see the interesting different people like, ooh, there's a monk over there. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Those. Yeah. Didn't we see one this weekend? Um. Yeah. I think we did. Was it we? this weekend? No, I think it was before then. The last time we went to Target, I think. There were uh, a couple monks in Target. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, that was really which cool. Which is always cool. Yeah. So, by the way, speaking of monks, not not monks monks, but. We'll look forward to a channel coming up, hopefully next month. Oh, yeah. yes. There's a new, not channel. I guess it would be a, no, I guess it could, it would be a channel. Would it be a channel? Would it, would it be, it be a channel? Or would it be part of Lion Tree Media? I don't know. I don't know. But the, the channel or the idea is a new show called Monk and Punk. And not Monk, um, like, like the monks we saw, but um, yeah, we have an idea for a new kids channel. That's uh, specifically for tween boys, but yeah, you know, tween which actually girls. they came up with their name. Yeah, they did a while ago. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So we're gonna we're planning on that one. That's a really neat. Um, They're both goofy, so yeah, it's gonna work out fun. really well. But look at be on the lookout for that channel. That's gonna be coming in the next probably six to eight weeks. Yeah, we got a lot of things planned. Hopefully, things start to you know pick up as far as uh, you know viewership and everything. Like that. But we're really excited. Yeah. So next episode, episode four, trying to lock down a, a guest for that. And episode five, we're going to talk about love and respect. Part two, we just touched on it today, but that was just a teaser. And and then our reviews, our review episode, episode seven. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, cool. Anything particular that you, you, you want to look forward to talking about or anything that you would think would be an interesting? Let's do a cooking channel one day. A cooking one. A cooking one? Yeah, where I cook, I show people how I cook my tacos. Or I could cook my You're tacos. You're going to give that out? Oh, yeah. I am. <laughs> I'm beyond You're the... You're better than sec- me because I am not giving away my cheesecake recipe. Oh, not girl. Happening. <laughs> that thing is gold. That's liquid gold. <laughs> yeah, that's, if you've never had a cheesecake. Uh, speaking of cheesecakes, you know, thanks to our sponsor, <laughs> Sharonica Leon, for sponsoring with cheesecakes. No, but if you ever need cheesecakes, a cheesecake for anything... How much did you used to charge? You can't charge what you used to because obviously the I price think is like. I used to charge like twelve bucks a piece. Yeah, it's probably at least fifteen or twenty. Yeah. Because yeah, prices have gone up and stuff like that. But if you need a, if you want a cheesecake, uh, Gma, comment below and let everybody <laughs> know how how good that cheesecake is. And Papa, you guys know that cheesecake is just delicious. Um, Dave. <laughs> yeah, every everybody, everybody, anybody who's had the cheesecake, even people that don't like cheesecake have. I've loved I have your cheesecake. Liked my cheesecake. Yeah. yeah. I make a ki- killer uh, sweet potato souffle. Yes, that is very delicious. Yeah. 
And I don't like sweet potatoes. Yeah. And I will eat a lot of that. Yeah, it's really good. So, yeah, we should do, yeah, we can make that like our Christmas show or something like that. Okay. Or our Thanksgiving show, our Christmas show. <laughs> <laughs> We're planning about Which tw- one? <laughs> 20 episodes out. So, um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, to share. If you're subscribing on YouTube, um, be sure to click that bell and get that notif- get those notifications. Uh, and thank you guys if you're listening through the ads. on uh, That really helps us out. So thank you so much for being patient on those ads and just uh, um, just helping us out. Yeah, that's that's gonna that's gonna that does good for us. So um, yeah, that's all I got right now. Do I still haven't come up with a sign off? So you know. So bye again. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>